creating great content, finding an audience, building engagement, monetizing your blog. This is Pro Blogger. Hi there, as those of you watching the replay of today's stream, we're talking about freelance writing today and I want to give you some tips on how to get those first freelance writing gigs. This is something that I know a lot of people are looking for information on at the moment. Um, there's a lot of people obviously who are looking for new income streams with the pandemic and disruption of normal work. And a lot of people also who've been kind of email and saying, this is something I've been thinking about doing for a long time and now I've got a little bit more time on my hands. It's something I do want to explore and have the capabilities to do. And so today, what I want to do is really share with you a few tips on particularly those early days. How do you actually get that first writing gig when you don't have any experience yet? Um, and this comes from a question that actually came in from one of our um, readers. This actually came in from Kimberly. She said, I love to write, but have not had any professional experience, except when I was teaching and coursework in college. I wrote PSAs for radio and TV at one of my jobs, but that's it. My question is this, how do I get a job writing when I don't have anything written published? Every job I look at asks for experience. Is there any place that will try someone out who has not had that experience? This is the question I kind of want to tackle today from Kimberly, and I do thank you, Kimberly, for that question. And uh, as always, if you do have questions that you'd like us to tackle in a live video or a blog post, feel free to sh shoot them in via our contact form. But really wanted to... Um, just um, tackle this particular question from Kimberly because it's a recurring question that I get quite a bit. Um, and a lot of it comes because we have a job board on ProBlogger. And I, I mentioned this not to promote it really today, but because I know a lot of ProBloggeries don't actually know we have this job board uh, sitting up on the site. And you can see there at problogger.com forward slash jobs. Every day there's two or three or sometimes four or five new jobs advertised of people looking for bloggers, people looking for writers. But as Kimberly points out, many of the advertisers are looking for people who are able to submit um, examples of their work, people who have some level of experience. And so um, the main thing I want to say today is if you haven't already done it, you need to start a blog because it is going to help you so much to land freelance writing gigs. Um, it's going to give you opportunity to showcase the kind of work that you can do, even if no one else is publishing it, because it enables you to publish it on your own site. It's going to give you that place for an online profile. It's going to give you a place where you can practice your writing, which again is so important when it comes to um, getting freelance writing gigs. Uh, it's going to give you a chance to build your profile and credibility. And this actually will help you not only to land new gigs because people might find you, but it actually makes you more attractive as a writer because when you are someone who has a blog has an audience, has a following, has credibility, um, you're much more likely to be able to bring that audience with you to the platforms that you write for. I was speaking to one Australian blogger recently who does freelance writing, and she said the reason that she got the gigs that she gets as a freelance writer is because she also says to the people who hire her, I will point my audience to the articles that you publish of mine on your site. So not only is she providing them with um, content, she's able to provide them with audience as well. And as a result, she's charging more. So um, there's so many good opportunities that come from having a blog. The last one there, it can lead to unexpected um, uh, opportunities and income streams as well, which is a whole other topic. Um, in fact, um, I, in my very early days of starting a blog, discovered this for myself. And one of the first ways that I actually made money as a blogger was writing for uh, a mainstream media site. And the only reason I landed that gig is because they approached me they actually found my blog on a particular topic and said, could you write an article like that for 
our um, publication. So all kinds of opportunities will come to you if you start a blog. Um, what, do, what do you use that blog for? Obviously, um, you want to publish regular content on it, publish new articles that perhaps no one else is publishing or things that interest you. You want to use your blog to highlight the work you publish in other places. Um, uh, so if you do land a, a writing gig, you should be linking to it from your blog as well as your social media. Um, and also use that blog to build relationships with others, others in your niche and with mainstream media. When you use your blog to link to interesting things that other people have written, that leads to deepening relationships. And, and for me, as I think back about the freelance writing that I've done over the years, it's rarely for me come because I've applied for a job. It's almost always come because of a relationship that I have. And so any way that you can use that blog or your social media profiles or any other presence that you have online to build a relationship with someone else, the more likely it is for an opportunity to come to you um, rather than you having to always look for that opportunity. And of course, on your blog, on your site, you should be listing your contact details and the type of services that you Offer. The other thing I'll just really quickly mention here is that you uh, freelance writing is just one income stream that you might want to advertise there. Now, one service, sorry, that you might want to advertise there. If you've been blogging for a while, you've probably also got other services that you could offer as a freelancer, whether they be social media, um, whether they be design of blogs or design of social graphics, whether it be editing, video, you as a blogger have probably already um, accumulated all kinds of skills that you could then sell to other people as services as well. And so whilst we're talking today purely about freelance writing, um, you can apply a lot of this to other things as well. Okay, so start a blog is important. We do have a course on that. This is not to promote it, but if you haven't started that blog yet, go and check out the Starter Blog course. It's free to do, and it will walk you through those seven steps of starting a blog. Um, Grove is in the comments um, today, and he's also will be popping a link to that as well. So let's get on to some other tips. Maybe you don't have a blog, or maybe you've got a blog and you want to find some other ways to land um, freelance writing. One of the other things that I've seen a number of people do recently quite effectively is use other platforms to pu publish their content. Maybe you can't get your first writing gig to help build your portfolio, but there are other sites online that will publish your content for free um, and to a, a largish audience. And one of those is Medium, uh, medium.com. It's on their domain. It's on their server. You don't have to set anything up apart from set up your account. Um, and so on that side, it's got some limitations because ultimately you don't have complete control of it. Ultimately, I would encourage you to have your own blog, but the, the bonus of Medium is that it has an incredibly large audience and established um, uh, publications already on it that you could submit content to as well. What I wanna do is just sort of show you here um, uh, an, uh, an article, a couple of articles that I wrote on Medium, um, which helped me to grow my profile in a particular area. Um, let me just kind of get to my screen share. Okay, so this is my Medium account. I don't use it overly uh, regularly, but if I'm wanting to get um, extra reach or build a profile in a new area, that's where I will publish stuff. And so these are some articles I wrote a year or so ago now, a couple of years ago now um, on it, and where I wrote on more of a personal development um, topic. And you can see there that um, uh, Darren Rouse in mission.org that is a publication that I published it to. And so if you actually go to mission.org, you actually find that on, on Medium, there's this publication called Mission, um, and it has a massive audience. And so I wrote my article on Medium and then submitted it to be published on mission.org. Now, I didn't get paid for that, but it got incredible reach. Um, I don't know if you can see there, but it's got 55 responses. It had two and a half thousand claps or likes. 
Um, and I've had other articles that have done even better than that as well. Um, this one down here, how to find your spark again. This one I published on a different publication on Medium called Noteworthy. Uh, and Noteworthy is another publication that you can submit things to. And so really, I guess what I'm trying to um, encourage you to think about here is finding other platforms that you can publish your work. Um, because these actually look like someone else has published your content and these look really good in your resume. Um, so it's one thing to have your own blog, your own portfolio, but if you can also uh, show examples of your work on other people's publications, maybe even publications that don't pay you but uh, have big reach and people can see that you've published content in other places, that helps to broaden and fill out your portfolio. So submit articles, uh, write articles on Medium, submit them to some of these publications, and there are lots of publications there that you can have a look at. And then, of course, looking for opportunities to write on other people's blogs. Um, guest posting was something that was massive uh, five or six years ago, uh, and, and it was a, a play that people used to make to build their search engine optimization profile. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't really have a lot of search engine optimization benefit these days to publish a piece of con content on someone else's blog and get a link back, but it does help you to uh, grow your audience because um, people will see your content on these other blogs. And again, it's a, another piece of content that you can uh, point to when you apply for a, a job that is on someone else's site. And it shows that person that you're applying to a job from that you have been well received somewhere else and that someone else thinks highly enough of you to publish your work. And it's social proof. Anytime that you can get your content into another publication on another blog, anytime you can appear on another podcast or on um, someone's social media account, all of this helps to get that snowball of momentum rolling. And once the momentum is rolling, it's so much easier to land that next piece of content. Um, if you can't get another guest post on someone's blog, Go to someone's Facebook page and write a piece of content for that or write a piece of content on someone's forum. Um, we have a, had a forum for many years on Digital Photography School, my main blog, and we had people come into that forum and they would publish guest posts on our forums and that would help get them attention and that would sometimes lead to us saying, hey, do you want to write a guest post? So putting your content out there in these um, places where you're not going to get paid, but you're going to get exposure, you're going to get noticed, you're going to build your credibility, you're going to build your profile. It all helps to practice your writing and uh, get that momentum going. Anytime you publish something anywhere, whether it's on another blog or Medium um, or in a forum or on a Facebook page, keep a note of that so that you can point people to it and so that you can reuse that down the track as the basis for other articles that you might want to write as well. Other tips, other things that you can do to get that foot in the door, to get that momentum going, volunteer to write. There are so many community groups around that are looking for people to create content for them. And you're not going to get paid for this, and I wouldn't encourage you to just write everything for free, but I certainly think there is a place to do that. One, because it's going to help these community not, uh, groups and not-for-profits and charities, but two, it's going to give you experience, and it's going to give you an example of content that you can create. A good example of this, I was talking to one blogger recently who started volunteering to write articles for their local football club. Their local football club has a blog on their site and they do a weekly recap of all the games. And so they've started writing the recap, the, the um, reports of the games for that club. And that um, re weekly report that they wrote actually landed them a job in their local newspaper who was looking for a news reporter. Uh, to cover similar types of things. So these types of opportunities, think about the type of freelance writing you want to do down the track and then ask yourself, are there some places I could create that content for free for a good cause? Whether it be a community group, a not-for-profit, a charity, or whether you've got a friend maybe who has a business who needs some copywriting on their site, there's all kinds of places out there. And the more you look, the more opportunities you will find. Again, Keep a record of everything you publish, create a list of it, add it to a little resume maybe that you want to create, and then ask for a testimonial as well if it is relevant to do that. A few other tips that you might want to um, kind of look at. 
Um, let me kind of pull back my slides up here for you um, because I actually realize now I didn't have the slides on the screen. Let me just kind of recap there. We had um, adding your content on Medium and other sites and then volunteering for social groups and uh, not-for-profits and charities. Um, the next thing that I kind of want to talk about here is to... Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. Sorry about the sound going off. I don't know what happened there. Can you hear me now? This is the beauty of live streaming. <laughs> I'm just going to wait until I get a confirmation. I thought my headphones had died. No sound for the last 30 to 40 seconds. Yes, you can hear me. Okay, I'm going to get back into this. I hope this is helpful to you. Okay, so what I was talking about is our job board. Um, and our job board actually has the ability for this, you to set up a profile. And it's um, there's two levels of it. There's a free level and there's a paid level. And we'll give you a little option to um, get that paid level at, um, with some bonuses a, a little bit later. But even at the free level, there's some benefits of doing it. The, the benefit of having a um, profile on the job board, if that's where you're looking for jobs, is that it's going to help you to be found by employers, but also to manage the process of applying for jobs. It provides you with a place where you can set up your own online resume. And I think this is really important. In addition to having your own blog and having some examples of content that you've published elsewhere, to actually have an online resume somewhere that you can point to, particularly when it's on a site like ProBlogger, which has some credibility um, amongst um, advertisers and people looking to hire. Um, it's a place where you can actually set up that little um, resume and leave some examples and talk about the experience that you help, um, have. And it also helps you to manage the job applications that you make up as well, and you can actually set up some job alerts there. So if you head, head to the link there on, on the slides, and Grove will share that as well in the comments. Um, it's going to help you to set that up. Um, another, and I'll come back to that in a moment as well, because we do have a little um, offer there for you, for those of you who want to kind of dig in more there. Other tips, and this is something that, I, again, I was just talking to a blogger yesterday, and they said they um, were able to develop their um, writing portfolio purely by doing a writing course. And there's lots of writing courses out there. I'm not going to recommend any in particular um, because you'll probably want to find something that's specialized um, for your particular niche. But when you take a writing course, you are going to be given assignments to do. And these can, of course, be then published on your blog or on Medium and used as examples as well. The last kind of main tip that I want to give you is to network as hard as you can and to actually um, um, tap into the network of relationships that already exist in the particular niches that you want to get work in. Um, because this is, for me, this has been where I've gotten almost all of the freelance writing work that I've done over the years. And when I talk to other bloggers, yes, they do find jobs on our job board often to get started, but it's usually as a result of the networks that the real opportunities, the ongoing jobs often land in their lap. So do spend time networking, getting to know people on social media, 
in Facebook groups, um, going to real events when a real events start again, and of course, sending emails to people and just asking questions and, and being helpful to people. Actually building those relationships can actually end up um, uh, really being very helpful. It's often the friend of a friend of a friend that lands you um, the job that, you, um, that you'll end up getting. Um, uh, one last little one that I've um, had some success with over the years as well is actually pitching to mainstream media. Often we look at newspapers and um, radio stations and television and all these type of places as um, places that are a bit old fashioned, but they actually are constantly looking for content creators as well. And so pitching to them, again, networking with um, reporters and editors and those types of things, um, a lot of them are very active on Twitter and a lot of them are looking for content creators. And so actually um, approaching your ideal mainstream media uh, to actually get land um, work from as well. And I think the, ultimately the best thing you can do to land freelance writing gigs is to write something every day and to actually practice your writing and to publish your writing. Uh, practice, publish, practice, publish. It will lead to improvement in the work that you do, but also is going to um, help you incredibly um, to uh, improve and to um, do better as well.